On October 15th, I released my biggest project yet, gdbrowser.com. gdbrowser is a website that lets you access pretty much all of Geometry Dash's online features with a similar looking UI and some extra features like an accurate leaderboard and a level analyzer. It's completely open source, so if you're a big brain and want to help fix my terrible code, everything is sitting there on GitHub. Also, I should probably mention that if too many people are on the site at once, it'll start to run really poorly since my servers aren't that great. But if you wait a day or two after this video is out, then everything should probably be okay. In this video, I'm going to try my best to explain how I use Geometry Dash's servers to make the website, and the interesting things that happened on the way. If it isn't already obvious, the backbone of the entire website is Rob Top's own servers for Geometry Dash. Every single page on the website gets at least one thing from them, whether it's a profile, level, or even just an icon. So let me tell you how it works. Pretty much every time you see the loading symbol in Geometry Dash, the game is getting something from Robtop servers, Boomlings.com. Yep, Boomlings.com. This man owns the domain GeometryDash.com, and he chooses to put it on a site named after a game which he pulled from the App Store. Y you know what, I, I won't ask. Depending on what you're getting from the servers, the URL will always be slightly different. Or is it URI? I, I really don't know and I couldn't care less. If you're downloading a level, for example, your game will send a request to boomlings.com slash database slash download gjlevel22.php. If you need a profile, that would be get gj user info 20. If you want to look at the frozen and horribly inaccurate leaderboards, that would be get gj scores 20. Also, gj stands for geometry jump, which is the original name for geometry dash. Robtop still uses it for literally everything. Anyways, just like math homework, getting the URL is not the end of step one. If you were to go to any of the pages I mentioned above, boomlings.com will hit you with a hot minus one, which is Robtop's way of saying, NOPE! Enter the post request. I'm not really sure how to explain it very well, but it's basically just a URL with extra steps. Think of it this way. Visiting a website is a get request because it gets something from the server. In this case, the web page. A post request, on the other hand, posts something to the server. But wait. Why do we need to use a POST request if we're getting something from the Geometry Dash servers? Because Robtop. That's why. Anyways, POST requests usually require you to send along some parameters to get the information we need. For example, let's say you want to get page 2 of Bloodlust's comments. You would send a request to get gjcomments21.php along with level ID equals 42584142, the ID of Bloodlust, to show that you want its comments. And page equal 2 will show you that you want page 2. Again, these are called parameters. I'll be using this word a lot, so make sure to sync it in. Every request on boomlings.com also requires the secret parameter, which is Robtop's top-notch form of security. To get the secret, you need to take the current Unix timestamp, multiply it by 3, convert each number to- No, I'm just kidding. It, it's literally just this. And it never changes. So how the heck did I find all of these things? How do I know what URL to use, or which parameters are needed? And how is there snow on the top of Mount Everest if it's above the clouds? The answer to everything but that last one is Wireshark. Wireshark is a neat little program that tracks all of the requests your computer makes along with the parameters and what's sent back. So for example, here's a request for downloading a level, and here's what the server sends back. And here are the parameters. And look, there's the secret again. How cute. So now that we know how to send a request to the Geometry Dash servers, we need to figure out how to handle the response. As you can see, Robtop did a wonderful job making the response as neat and organized as possible. Just kidding, it looks like a cat fell asleep on the keyboard. But if Geometry Dash knows how to decode this, then we must be able to as well. And here's a rough explanation of how, just keep in mind that there's a few annoying exceptions. Once the servers send back a response, in this case Robtop's profile, the first thing you want to do is split this massive chunk of text at every second colon. Aha, he said colon! Now the number on the left of each colon represents a piece of the response, and the text on the right is the actual value. There's no way to tell what the number on the left is for, so you have to look at the actual profile and try to match things up. Or you could do what I did and sift through GitHub for people who already did that and wrote down their findings. Anyways, now the response is more or less decoded. Username is 1, ID is 2, stars is 3, demons is 4, and so on. If all of that work sounded really tedious, allow me to casually plug the fact that GD Browser comes with a helpful API that fetches everything from the Geometry Dash servers in a much less terrible way. Also, it sends the response as a crisp and beautiful JSON, rather than something comparable to my middle school's bathroom which didn't have a garbage can. Anyways, now that we know how to get anything we want from the Geometry Dash servers, it's time to display it on the screen in a much more visually appealing way. That's right, we're making a website. For the casuals that don't know what this is, it's called HTML. You type it up, and then your browser reads it and displays it to the user like this. 
I won't go into too much detail since it's pretty straightforward. I shared a lot of videos of the development of the site on Twitter, so you'll see me using a lot of old screenshots and clips from there for this part of the video. The first page of the site I worked on was the actual level page. I spent two or three days, usually in the middle of class, making this page from the ground up, with the goal of making it look almost identical to the one in Geometry Dash. Except the font, because god damn are text outlines hard to do in HTML! Once I finished the actual design of the page, I coded my server, being the thing that actually sends you the HTML in the first place, to take all of the values such as the title, difficulty, creator, or song, and change them to display the proper information based on the level you're searching. It's almost like a 10 year old that just discovered the inspect element button for the first time. It was at this point I realized that the page was loading really slowly because it's essentially downloading an entire Geometry Dash level only to display the basic information on the screen. But then I had a big brain idea. Instead of getting the actual level from the Geometry Dash servers, I could simply get the search results for it. Even though very little of it is shown in Geometry Dash, search results contain almost all of the information of a level, with the exception of the upload date, password, low detail button, and of course, the actual code for the level. So I did exactly that, and it worked really well actually. I even added a button later down the road that lets you download the level to get the missing information. Next page I made was the search results. Unlike the level page, the server doesn't change any text on this one. This time, the page itself sends a request to the Geometry Dash servers, and then fills up the search result box with everything it sends back. Every time you go to another page, the box empties and repeats the process. Other than that, and also other than positioning the difficulty faces, making this page was pretty straightforward. Next on the list was searching. Again, nothing too exciting since it's pretty much just a recreation of Geometry Dash's search page. It takes whatever filters you have selected, and sends them over to Geometry Dash servers as parameters for GetGJ Levels 21. From there, it redirects you to the search result page. Also, I was too lazy to do it Robtop's way, so if you want to search for levels with an in-game song, you actually have to type the name of it. Sorry. On the bright side, you can get quick access to all the levels with hacked songs. After that, it took about an hour to make two really rushed pages for map packs and gauntlets. Once you select one, it just takes you to the search result page. With all that done, the home page, which I made in between search results and searching, looked like this. And then I took a shower and had the idea of adding level saving, so I ditched the featured button in favor of that. But Colin, what's level saving? I hear you asking, and to that I say, it's... it's... it's level saving. When you come across a level that speaks to you, you can click this button to save it. After that, it's added to your saved levels list. The whole thing works by saving levels to your cookies, which is a word that probably sparks a lot of PTSD on the internet nowadays. Cookies are little round desserts that, uh, uh, I mean, they're little bits of text that your browser stores when you're on a website. For example, most sites store your login information in your cookies so that you don't need to re-log into the site every time you visit it. Same thing goes for gdbrowser.com, except instead of login information, it's a list of your saved levels. Oh yeah, and I tricked the Geometry Dash servers into sending search results for these specific levels by adding type equals 10 to the level search parameters. The type parameter is what tells the Geometry Dash servers what list of levels to send back. 0 is regular, 1 is most downloaded, 2 is most liked, 3 is trending, 4 is recent, 8 may have been the sent levels list before I told Viperin that he should probably tell Robtop to secure that, and so on. The one that's being used here is 10, which is for map packs. But instead of just telling the servers which map pack to get, it actually does this by sending the three level IDs to the servers as parameters. And guess what? The limit isn't even three. So basically, all of your saved levels get sent to the servers disguised as one really big map pack. Please don't fix this, Robtop. After that, I was left with just one last page to make, the leaderboard, also known as the thing that's been frozen for years because Robtop doesn't have a proper anti-cheat. Don't worry, Rob, I would probably do the same. What I wouldn't do is allow you to go past the top 100 cap. I'm not joking when I say that the Geometry Dash servers would literally send you the top 1 million players if you requested it. Oh, and in case you're wondering, the first person on the creator leaderboard to have zero creator points is at position 3627 last time I checked. Anyways, I made the leaderboard page on stream, so you can check that out if you want, link in the description. This is where things started to get really interesting. Since I started working on the site, I really wanted to make a leaderboard that displays an accurate version of the top 100 players. Viperin suggested to put together a big list of star grinders, fetch all of their stats, and then display them from most to least stars. And that was the original plan actually. However, shortly after the leaderboard stream, a folk named Pepper360 reached out to me on Discord. He shared with me a huge accurate leaderboard spreadsheet with exactly what I was looking for, and so much more. It's absolutely insane, and I didn't even know this kind of stuff was possible in Google Sheets. The link's in the description as well, go check it out. 
Anyways, he invited me to their private updated leaderboard discord server where the big team behind the spreadsheet adds star grinders to the sheet and bans hackers. I had a talk with SMJS, also known as the smart one, and he willingly made me a little updated leaderboard API that I could fetch the top 100 players from. From there, I made my server fetch the stats of those 100 players every time you go to the leaderboard page, and that was the updated leaderboard all done and dusted. I have to say, it's a really crazy feeling when you're invited to this secret server run by people with over 100,000 stars who gather together and decide the fate of hackers. Meanwhile, I'm just kinda sitting there posting clubstep monsters and Konosuba memes. And then things got even more crazy. I was originally going to add comments and profile posts and then release the site, but then I got a DM from someone named Alton that simply said, Hey. Now, my rule with Discord DMs is that if you have a question, I have an answer. But if you're just saying hey, I usually don't reply. This is because if I do, most people would think that just because I replied once, I'm their best friend and they're able to spark an hour-long conversation with me every single day until I die. But I was in an especially generous mood that day, and I felt like making a loyal GD colon fan's day by replying back. Hello, I responded. It turned out that Alton was more than just the average GD colon fan. Way more. He was working with his friend Alphys on an external editor for Geometry Dash called GD Edit, and it looked awesome. Realizing that I was speaking to someone who knew how to read a Geometry Dash level's code, which looks like this, I asked him how to do exactly that. And sure enough, he taught me. 1 is the object, 2 is the x position, 3 is the y position, 6 is the rotation, 20 is the editor layer, and so on. I use this knowledge to add an awesome new feature to GD Browser called Level Analysis. Basically, it reads the code of the level and displays all the neat findings. First thing I added was the order of the portals. How it works is by taking all of the objects in the level, filtering them out to just the portals, and then sorting them by x position. As I continued to get more into it, I added all sorts of crazy new things like the amount of triggers, the different block types, the color channels, and so on. Level analysis was by far my favorite thing to add to the site. And then I realized that I was turning into Robtop. I was continuing to add random new features to the site and delaying the release more and more. But who cares, I still thought level analysis was pretty cool. Anyways, that's when I started working on the final part of GD Browser, the comments. Just like all the other pages, it was more or less just whatever the Geometry Dash servers send, and then displaying it on the screen in a Geometry Dash looking way. However, I did make some pretty neat discoveries. First of all, you can upload and read comments on any level ID, whether the level actually exists or not. So when I looked at the comments for the non-existent level with an ID of 1, I was greeted with this. Yeah, so it turns out that this is where all the hackers hang out. Also, level negative 1 is spammed with comments by Thanos himself, and the Titan even said hi to me on Twitter. Another interesting find was that you could get anybody's comment history, even if they disabled viewing it in Geometry Dash. Turns out all that does is just hide the button on their profile. But I respect their privacy, so I disabled viewing their comments on GD Browser. But for real, Robtop, you really need to work on these things. With comments and profile posts done, GD Browser was, well, it was finished. So after a day of carefully looking over every corner of the site and making some <clears throat> mobile optimizations, I nervously uploaded all the files to my virtual private server and typed the words pm2 start index.js. So then I actually went to the folder where the code was and typed the words pm2 start index.js. And then I realized that I never installed all the modules that need to be imported. So I installed all of them and typed the words pm2 start index.js. Error. Script not- God damn it, I'm in the wrong directory again. Anyways, after a couple of audible screeches, I got the site running on gdbrowser.com. And then I plugged the site on Twitter and YouTube, only to discover that my servers can't actually handle 100 people on a website at once. So it ended up running about as well as Steam during the summer sale. And considering I just made a whole video talking about the website, it's probably only going to get worse. But other than that, people seem to really like GD Browser. I ended up posting all the code for the project on GitHub since a lot of people asked, and although I was really skeptical at first that people would all laugh at my terrible code, I'm actually really glad I did it. It always feels great to see how open people are to improving and cleaning up my code. Especially you, 101 Arrows, you're a legend. Anyways, this video has been getting way longer than I hoped it would be, so if you're still watching, I won't waste any more of your time. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end, by the way. I'm very interested in hearing what you thought about this type of video. Did I explain things well? Did I leave out the parts you were wondering about? Maybe you didn't understand a single thing I said and just really liked my voice. Thank you, by the way. Drop your questions and feedback in the comments below. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys later.